Let me be as gold, pure gold, refined fire, my heart's one desire is to be. Welcome to St Peter's Online on this Sunday morning. Let's pray as we begin, shall we? Heavenly Father, as we meet again, together but separate, we pray that you will enable us to feel like part of the same family. A family that crosses time, and space and history and distance because of our love for you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will send your spirit upon us this morning. Father, excite us about your word. And Father, we ask that you will meet each of us in our need this morning. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad in it. it. Give us the joy of your saving help and, and sustain us, us with your life-giving life spirit. spirit. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our prayers and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, the king, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and fear. And let's remember as we come to our Heavenly Father, we don't need to do that in fear. If we come with a truly repentant or sorry heart, then he will forgive us. That's how it works. So there needs to be no fear. So let's say the words together. Lord, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We, we have, have done, done evil in, in your sight. sight. We, we are sorry and repent. repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the prayers and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos, you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The words I'm reading this morning are from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in ways you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying, and cra gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following the desires and thoughts, like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised, raised us up with Christ, 
and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let's just pray for a moment. Heavenly Father, we know we get a, a rich grouping of words when we hear Paul. Father, we ask that you will help us to see in this passage what you want us to see today. Father, we ask that you speak to us. Father, teach us something new and maybe remind us of those things we may have forgotten. And we ask this in your son's wonderful name. Amen. We're talking about grace this morning, grace and discipleship, because there is a link. But I want to look at what grace means today. We hear lots of times that God's grace is free, but what does that mean? And is there a response that we have to make? So what is grace? <laughs> well, grace is not getting what we deserve. Grace is not getting what we deserve. I wonder if you've ever done something and you've kind of expected repercussions or a punishment and it just didn't happen. You've done something to somebody or said something to them that was hurtful and you expect them to shout at you or scream at you or ignore you and there's nothing, no shouting, nothing has changed. The relationship is still good. You didn't get what you deserve. Our relationship with God is based on grace. His grace, certainly not ours. <laughs> Sometimes as believers we fail to understand God's grace. We just can't comprehend that wonder and the incomparable riches of God's grace. I want us to try, he hasn't a word try, and consider the fullness and the extent of God's grace this morning and how it should affect the way that we live. And if you just hold on one moment, as with the way of the world, um, my uh, Twitter feed has just dropped out. I'll be back in a moment. Welcome back on Twitter. Very sorry, Facebook. <laughs> the joy of doing things from home and relying on technology. I cannot wait until we are back in church again. It will be absolutely wonderful. So, the greatest blessing we receive as a result of God's grace is our salvation. And this passage tells us exactly that in verses 5 and 8 it says it is by grace that you have been saved 
I've heard a few people on a few sh uh, street corners um, shouting out the odds that I need to be saved. Someone once stuffed a flyer into my hands and then walked off. It too told me that I needed to repent and be saved. Now, I don't disagree with that statement at all. But what it didn't tell me was how I needed to be saved and what I needed to be saved from. So it was like, you need to be saved. And I turned it over, nothing. Well, that's a pretty important thing to understand. I don't think we can know how amazing grace is until we understand what it is that we are saved from. First one, you are dead in your sins. People sometimes think, well, you know, everybody sins. So we fail. So does everybody else. What's the big deal? The big deal is that we were dead in sin and still are unless we are saved. We're dead. We're not sick. We're not a bit ill. We're not in need of a rest. It's not a case of taking a pill and feeling better in the morning. We are dead, stone dead, cold, stiff, without life. And I do realise I'm starting to sound a bit like the Monty Python uh, dead parrot sketch. But it needs to be clear. Now, I've, I've watched plenty of what's called post-apocalyptic zombie movies in my time. But it still feels a little bit odd to say that there are hundreds and thousands of dead people walking on the surface of our planet. Dead. Alive in body, but as good as zombies, according to what Paul says in this passage. To understand truly, we need to see and acknowledge what we are. No one ever really thinks, you know, great, I'm going to do a bit of um, self-looking. Uh, I'm going to look deep into myself and look at all the horrible bits and that's really good. <laughs> it's tough to admit sometimes that we sin, especially if we like that particular sin. Now, I'm not here to make you miserable, but I am here to challenge you. Unless we know that we are sinful through and through, we can't really understand how amazing the grace of God is. Now, if you're sitting there with a list of things going round and round in your head of how bad you are and how much you've failed God and others, it's good to realise that part of ourselves, but then we need to read verses four and five. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace that you have been saved. God raised us up with Christ. In Romans chapter six, Paul says that if we die with Christ, if we also live with him. If we see our sin and we die to that sin, asking forgiveness and receiving salvation, then we have a new life in Christ. We are made alive once again. But let's just get the order right. It's important that we do that. God's grace does not come after we confess our sins. It comes before. It is by grace, God's grace, that we are saved. It's by what he does and certainly not us. Without my deserving it at all, out of sheer grace, God grants and credits to me the perfect satisfaction, righteousness and holiness of Christ. Christ died in our place, died our death with our sins on his shoulders to make us perfect in him. That's what grace is. And why would God do that? Verse four, because of his great love for us. Not because we're worth it, because we certainly aren't, 
but because God loves us. Do you get how amazing that grace is? I want you just to close your eyes for a moment and to think about that amazing grace. Just keep them closed and I'll tell you when to open them. The almighty creator of the universe has saved you. You do not need to be chained up in your sins and past things of your life. You are made alive in Christ. In Christ alone. Nothing you do but in Christ alone. By God's grace we are saved by faith. It's God's gift to us. You can open your eyes again now. The result of this great act of grace gives us eternal life and a restored relationship with God. So we are Christians made alive by his grace. Is that it? Can we go, you know, cheers God, that was great and have a rest and a nice life afterwards and do nothing? You know I'm going to say no. <laughs> I've said a few times that God's grace is free, but it doesn't mean that we get a free ride. God's grace is free and in return, God wants everything. That sounds like a little bit of a contradiction in terms, doesn't it? You can have it for free, but then I want everything. Doesn't sound quite so free now, does it? But it is. We can't work our way to salvation. No manner of good things that we do in this life will ever give us eternal life. Only receiving God's grace and faith in Christ will do that. How do we give everything back? What does that mean? Let's go back to the passage, verses eight and nine. Verse eight reminds us that we are saved by grace. Saved by grace through faith. We are only saved when we trust that, <laughs> let me say that again, we are only saved when we trust that what God did in Christ is true and is necessary and we rely on him rather than ourselves. When we move into the passenger seat and let him take the wheel, we let God take control and take control of everything. Now, not in a I don't care kind of way, but let him take control in a lead me on kind of way. We need to give over control to God. Humanly, because that's all we can do, Humanly, it's hard to do that. Naturally, we want to be in control. If not of others, at least of our own life. Or at least of my technology this morning would do. <laughs> Some people, though, they make really bad passengers, don't they? My training vicar was a really bad passenger. And on our first trip out, when I was driving, I asked him if he had any money. And when he asked me why, I said, because I've heard what a really, really bad passenger you are. And I just need to know if you've got any money because you might need to get the bus home. I don't think I'm a bad driver. In fact, I think I'm a good driver. God, however, is a perfect driver. When we give control over um, our lives, when we give control of our lives over to God, it's not just blind faith and a hope that all will be well. This is God we're talking about. He is 100% in control. He's not always 100% safe, but he's always in control. I don't mean that we sit back and do nothing, but we sit back and let God be in control. Our works can't save us but they are a result of salvation. Good works don't save, but once we are saved, they should be evident. 
And the end of faith is not saying, I believe. That's the end of your former life in which you were dead in your sins. Saying I believe is the beginning, not the end. What does it say in verse 10? For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are God's handiwork, his workmanship, and we are created to do good works. Now hear this properly, created to do good works, not created to do good works in order to be saved. What does doing good works mean? Well, you know, God's not up there first thing in the morning with a kind of a clipboard and a tick sheet. And he's like, yeah, Deb's done that and she's done that. And she's, oh no, she's not done that. That's a big cross. That's been an epic fail. That's not what God does. God's not going to say, well, because of not doing that, my grace and your salvation are over. God's not like that. He's not that fickle, thankfully. But there is an expectation that the spirit in us and the faith we have will bear fruit. And it's not just a bunch of random things to do. Remember the end of verse 10, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. It's all planned. Don't panic. We as disciples of Christ should want to pray, want to read the Bible, want to change want to tell others about what's happened to us. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that cheap grace is grace without discipleship. Our grace isn't cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. It costs Jesus everything and it demands my everything. It demands your everything. We were created to do good works. God doesn't make us do those things. We can refuse, but why would we after all that Christ has done for us? Our Christian faith doesn't stop with saying, I believe, it begins. It all begins. Being a disciple is not always easy. In fact, it can be downright hard sometimes. Continuing on, the path of learning is not always easy. You read your Bible sometimes, you think, that's brilliant. And you read it sometimes and think, oh boy, that's really hard to swallow. Don't like the sound of that. And maybe some soul searching begins. It might sometimes be hard, but it's always a privilege. It is worth it. God always knows what he's doing even if we don't. Just think of it like a loving mother mixing ingredients and rolling out dough and then giving the child a cookie cutter so they can make biscuits. That's the hard bit done. God did that. The preparations have been made. God did that. And then it's time for us to do something. God's grace is everything. God's grace is incomparable. God's grace is amazing. Do you understand that amazing grace today? How's your life as a disciple going? What are you learning? Where is God leading you? Do you feel fruitful in God's grace? Because he wants you to. God's grace is free. It is freely given. Remember, we are his handiwork. He has plans for us. Get out of the driver's seat. Get in the passenger seat because it's the ride of your life. We're just going to listen to some music now and it's called Your Love Is Amazing.
let's spend some time reminding ourselves of what we believe in God and let's say the Apostles Creed together if you have the words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we bring our world to you this morning. Father, we thank you for this world. And Father, we're sorry for what we're doing to it. What we're doing to the people who are on it. Father, forgive us. Help us to do better. And Father, we pray for the families of all those people who've lost their life in this last week, not just to coronavirus, but the many other ways in which people leave this world. Father, we pray your comfort into their families, their friends. We pray your love into the space which they have left in other people's lives. Father, we pray for all of those people who care for somebody else in whatever way they do that. For those people that give of themselves in order for somebody else to have a better life. Father, we pray that you will strengthen them, help them to continue And Father, give them times of rest so they can be restored in order to help someone else once again. And Father, we pray for ourselves and where we are. We bring our happiness and our joys to you. And we bring our sorrow and our sadness to you. We bring those things that we're excited about. And we bring those things that create fear in our hearts. Father, we ask that you will send your Holy Spirit on each one of us. To enable us to do what you have asked us to do today. Father, help us to deal with one day at a time and to come back to you in the morning for more strength and more encouragement and to do that each day. And Father, we thank you that we are saved by grace and not what we do. Father, thank you that your son died for each one of us. Father, we thank you that that grace is free to everyone. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together, gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us. <coughs> So we pray. Our Father Amen. in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to listen to a song in a moment called My Lighthouse. Now I know that we've had this one recently, but it's one of my favourite hymns and I absolutely love it. And we really do need to remember that we have a light in the dark world that we live in. If you know the words of the grace, please say them with me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Please enjoy the song and I will be here each evening at half past six and next Sunday. Take care, stay safe and God bless you. You are my